Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, May 3rd, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Didier today wrote a diary about how to use his Oli dump tool to extract uh, project references from a Visual Basic for application project uh, files. Everything you really need to sort of extract them is already in the tool. Uh, you can identify the stream. You can then decompress the stream. And to make things easier, DDE even wrote a plugin that allows you to pretty much automate all of this. Now, in addition to the project references that can be found in the Dir stream, that's sort of what Didi shows here how to extract. There is also a compiled version of this in the performance cache. That's something that you sadly can't extract yet with the DA's tool. That's just because, well, uh, the format isn't documented and also this performance cache is somewhat optional. However, DDA still shows you how to extract strings from the performance cache to see if you see anything unexpected that you didn't see in the other project references. So certainly mandatory reading if you are regularly analyzing VBA documents. And Forescout wrote a blog post about some newly discovered vulnerabilities in the Free Range Routing Project. Free Range Routing Project is an open source implementation of routing protocols, in particular BGP. If you're a bit more old fashioned like myself, you may recognize the name Quagga and uh, FR routing was forked from Quagga a few years ago. Now, like a lot of open source networking software, FR routing finds itself in a number of commercial products as well. The vulnerabilities themselves are not all that super severe, but they can lead to a denial of service of uh, the router. What saves the day here a little bit is that FR routing by default will only accept these messages from routers to which it has an explicitly configured routing or peering relationship. However, at least for two of these vulnerabilities, an attacker is able to spoof the source IP and if they can manage to get that packet to the vulnerable router, that router will also suffer the denial of service attack. So something that you do want to address. I don't think this is like super urgent, but of course, denial of service in routing equipment is usually considered a higher priority than just your average run of the mill denial of service vulnerability. Then we got an interesting new vulnerability affecting JSON web tokens. If you're not familiar with JSON web tokens, they're very commonly used for authentication access control in modern web applications. They consist of a header telling you what signature algorithm was used. They contain a body, that's the actual data, and then a signature. Now, one Ongoing problem with JSON web tokens is their flexibility. For a signature algorithm, you do have the option to either use symmetric or asymmetric algorithms. For symmetric algorithms, of course, the same key is used to create a signature as is used to verify the signature. And a common problem here is that if you verify a particular signature, well, uh, you may use a key that was really only intended for asymmetric encryption and then use it to verify a symmetric algorithm. That's usually referred to as algorithm confusion. And the way this is exploited is that an attacker is getting a hold of a public key, uses this public key that's intended for asymmetric encryption to create a symmetric signature uses a symmetric algorithm, and then the receiver of the token is verifying the key, well, using that symmetric algorithm. After all, that's what the header tells it to use, and then uses the same public key, which will work. So as a result, in order to protect against some of these attacks, it's not as easy as you would expect sometimes to get the public key that's being used to verify these JWTs. But there is one particular algorithm, and that's the elliptic curve DSA algorithm, that actually makes it quite easy to derive the public key from the signature. After all, the public key is called public for a reason. It's not 
it's really supposed to be a secret. And if an attacker is able to obtain several signed JWTs that use the ECDSA or elliptic curve DSA algorithm, then the attacker may be able to retrieve the public key and use that public key to launch an algorithm confusion attack by using this public key and a symmetric algorithm to, in order to then fake a signature. Interesting attack and uh, something that you should probably look into if you are using JSON web tokens for authentication and access control. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.